Hello students and welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the second module Introduction to Quantitative Chemistry. This is video number 10 and we're going to be looking at percentage composition and empirical formula. So just a quick review then. The empirical formula of any compound is the simplest whole number ratio of the elements in that compound. Sometimes it will be the same as the molecular formula, but not always. So in this first example here, we have water. And this is both a molecular formula and an empirical formula. As the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is 2 to 1. The second compound here is hydrogen peroxide. Hopefully you can see that, first of all, the elements that make up hydrogen peroxide are the same as those that make up water, but the ratio is different. In this case, the empirical formula is different to the molecular formula. In this case, the empirical formula, which is the simplest whole number ratio of the elements in the compound, is HO. It's important to remember too that empirical formula can be used to express um, non-compounds uh, but non-molecules. So for example, sodium chloride, which is an array, we now know that this is a whole network of sodium ions and chloride ions joined to one another uh, in a network solid. So we have some fraction or multiple of Avogadro's number of each of these individual particles or ions. But the ratio can be simplified to indicate a one to one ratio of sodium to chlorine. And therefore, the formula for the compound sodium chloride is NaCl. This doesn't indicate that it's a molecule, but it does indicate the simplest ratio of the elements in the compound. One of the important things is that if we know the percentage composition for a particular compound, then we can use stoichiometry and Avogadro's constant to help us determine the empirical formula of the compound. Now, we don't always need to do both of these things, but we do need to um, very much use the mole concept as we are seeking to solve these sorts of problems. So here's an example of a problem. We have a compound made up of carbon and oxygen. 27.3% of the compound is carbon and 72.3% is, ox is oxygen. Can we find the empirical formula? Well, the first thing that we need to do is to reduce each of these percentages to a decimal. You don't have to do this, you can leave them as percentages, but um, as with a lot of mathematics, there is a point where it's probably easier for you to work through a system that you're already comfortable with. So I'll walk you through one. If you're comfortable with this, use it. Otherwise, develop a system of your own. The next thing we need to do is to divide each of these by the molar mass. So this comes from the periodic table. So we look at up the periodic table, we find that carbon is 12.01 and we find that oxygen is 16.00. Our next step is to divide our decimalized version of the percentage by each of these molar masses. And that takes into account the fact that different elements have different masses and therefore something could be twice uh, twice the percentage but maybe that's because it's twice the mass so in order to account for that we need to divide by these molar masses when we do that the value for carbon is 0 0.0227 and the value for oxygen is 0 0.0452 rounded to um, three significant figures our next step is to look for which of these is the smallest so obviously this one is the smallest. So therefore what I'm going to do is to divide both of these by the same number. 0 0.0227. And when I do that, what I find is obviously these ones are going to cancel out and give me one. But these two are going to uh, produce a number of 1.99. Now this is as close enough to a ratio of one to two. And you may notice, those of you who kind of looked a little ahead, um, that the percentage is not exactly 100. Uh, it doesn't add up to 100%, it's pretty close. So obviously sometimes some minor errors do creep in and they do mean that we end up with some um, slight 
uh, error in our number and that's why I thought I'd include this for you as an example. So if we have a ratio of 1 to 2 then what we are saying is the carbon is the 1, the oxygen is the 2 and of course this simplifies to the formula CO2. So this is the sequence of steps that you would want to follow when you're transferring a percentage into an empirical formula. The key is this, if we know the formula mass we can work out the um, molecular formula as well as the empirical formula. So in the, in the previous example, the CO2 may just give us the simplest ratio of carbon to oxygen. We would actually need the molar mass in order for us to know exactly whether or not the compound was CO2 in terms of its molecular formula. So there's a little bit of a, a complicated equation here. The number of empirical formula units in a molecule is just the molar mass of the compound divided by the molar mass of one empirical formula unit. So to go back to our original slide, we had... Uh, hydrogen peroxide had an empirical formula of HO. Now we know that hydrogen is 1.008 when we look it up on the periodic table and oxygen is 16 and therefore one empirical formula unit for HO would be equal to 17.008. Okay, um, so that's the total here 17.008 and of course that number here is equivalent to the molar mass of one empirical formula unit. If we know that the molar mass of the compound is 34.016, then all we do is to divide that mass of the compound by the mass of one formula unit for the empirical formula, and we find a ratio here is two. So all we then do is we multiply our HO by two, and of course this is a molecular formula now, so it looks slightly different. This takes a little practice, so I've gone a bit over time for my usual uh, today, but take plenty of time to practice these questions and I'm sure you'll master them. Thanks for watching.